Amanda Weber with Instructional Technology. I'm going to help students and parents um, get logged in to Pearson and how to navigate through Pearson. Okay, so we're going to start on our ECISD homepage. We're going to go to Parents and Students on the top. Under important links, we are going to go to class link. We're going to click click to sign in. It'll bring you to this page right here, and this is where your student will put their ID number or their username and their password. If they're kindergarten through fourth grade is their ID number. And if they're fifth grade and above, it was um, originally their eight digit birthday. And at school, they were prompted to reset that. So it should be their password that they've designed right there. So you're going to put that information in and click sign in. It'll take you to this loading screen here. And once you are uploaded and loaded here, it'll show you all your available apps. So we're going to click on the P Pearson Easy Bridge icon right here. Okay. If you get a pop up asking for the extension, you don't need it. You can just click continue to website. And it's going to take you to the Pearson Easy Bridge sign in. The first time it comes here, you will have to put in your sign in information. Um, I'm going to jump back to the tab for class link. If you um, right click on it and click more info, it will remind you what this information is going to be for students. It, their username is the lowercase letters ECSD and their ID number and their password is their last initial. It has to be a capital. Okay, so Amanda Weber, my capital letter would be a W. So their last initial plus their eight digit birthday. Okay, and it does have to be a capital. Okay, so the first time you go to the site, you need to plug it in. And then when you click sign in, ClassLink will save that information. So the next time that you come to log in, it'll have it and it'll just go, should go straight through and log in. Okay, so put that information in and click sign in. And once you log in, it's going to take you to this page right here where you can see your classes and your products. Okay, so over here, it'll show them what products they have. If they've, they've got um, an elementary, they've got their math, science and social studies books that they should have access to through Pearson. If you get um, a message that says, sorry, no content found, um, you might communicate with your teacher that they haven't added their products yet on Pearson and your student doesn't have access until the teacher does that step. We sent out instructions for teachers earlier to do that. But again, patience, flexibility as we all navigate this journey together. And you just might um, reach out to them and see if they know when that will um, be happening. Okay, so their products are right here. They can click on the um, math title right there. The first time they go through it, it's going to make them set up their, their profile so they can choose their preferred language, pick their profile icon from the selection available, pick a background image that they want on theirs, and then they're going to come down here to ready, get started. Okay. This will be the main screen that they come, um, they go into. They have three options. They can browse, check their classes, and then check their grades once it's been graded. Browse will give them access to look through their math, science, or social studies textbook. They can click through. They can go and look through each topic. Um, and they have access to all the lessons already. They don't have to necessarily wait for the teacher to give them an assignment. They can go through, find um, the different information, and see what's in their book. Okay. Now, that was under the Browse tab where they can see any of their books. Under the Classes tab, if their teacher has gone in and given them assignments, it'll list out what assignments they have available. For math, science or social studies. It'll tell them right here um, some assignments and when they're due. Okay, so um, they can click on that class. When they come in, they will have three tabs. They'll have a not started tab, an in progress tab, and their completed tab. They can click on the assignment. Um, 
depending on what the teacher assigned, there's some different things that they can see. Um, they can watch and view uh, video tutorials where they'll go through, watch the video. And then down in the corner, you can see where they can go to the next and um, it'll give them a question here. And they have some tools right here that they can actually, you know, come over here and write on the screen. Depending on um, if you have a tablet or, or things like that, and it'll be a little messy on that part. Okay. Um, and then they have their check mark for when they want to turn in their assignment. Okay. That was the first assignment on this one. There was four, so they can navigate right here. On this, it, it just gives them access to the page that's in the book. They don't have any editing features on here. They can't like input their answers or things like that. Um, you as the parent, if you wanted to, you could help them out and download and print it. Then they could do the actual um, work. If you, you know, for some reason they don't have that page or maybe their page got torn up. Um, if they got their workbook from their um, school, you could print it. Uh, they could um, just number their paper and do the work on a piece of notebook paper to turn in. If you're doing paper, they could do it that way and uh, take a picture and turn it in. However, your teacher is assigning that stuff to turn in. If it's through Google Classroom or if you're turning in packets, that kind of a thing. But they do have an option so that they can get access to workbook pages that they need. Okay, this one is another video that they can watch. And this one only has one part to do. So they hit the check mark and turn it in. Oh, and then if you notice up here in your tab, it'll tell you that it's been completed. I didn't hit complete on this one because um, I was showing you and I forgot to do that. But when you're on it, it has it right here as you can mark as completed. That way the teacher knows to go and look for whatever instructions she's given on how to turn that part in. Then we can jump to assignment four, and this one is a quick check. So this one, they'll hit start. They go through, um, they can listen to the question, and it'll read it to them. Uh, then they can select their answer choice right here. Hit next. I'm just gonna click through real quick so you can see what it looks like. And they can, anytime there's a listen button, it will read them that answer choice or a question. Okay, once they've gone through and hit next for all of their questions, it gives them a little review progress screen so they can see that they've answered every question. If they had accidentally skipped one, they can click and go back um, to that screen and look and review and make sure they got their answer in. They can click review progress down here at the bottom. And then once they're done, they click submit test. It'll pop up and give them a grade. I lucked out and got one right. Um, it'll give them their grade up here at the top. It'll um, show them uh, which ones they got right and wrong. They can go back, view the, ans uh, view the question, look and see which answer they submitted, look and see which answer was correct. Okay. And then um, all of that is going to go back to their teacher and their teacher would be able to reach out and say, hey, you didn't do so well on this one. Why don't we, you know, look at some extra practice options? Okay. Then up here in the top right, you'll notice there's a button that says turn in all. And you can click turn in all. You completed all parts. Are you ready to turn it in? And they can turn that in. Okay. And success, you did it. Okay. Um, so they're able to see um, all of their different assignments. So uh, see their grades listed over here. This one again, um, that was that worksheet that you um, completed. Depending on how the teacher wants you to uh, turn in your stuff, they do have an option to uh, turn in a file. So if you took a picture and put it in your Google Drive and could attach it from here or from the computer, that's an option as well. So again, you can attach any files you need to, and then um, any comments you wanna make to your teacher, you can post there, okay? They do have a discussion board -ish area, but I don't know that any teacher will be using that since we've got so much new coming in. Um, they can hit the back arrow here, 
and go back. And these are the other assignments that they had been assigned. Again, so um, now they can see their completed work and then go back and look at their score there, which can change after the teacher goes in and manually grades the other parts of the assignment. So they can click on this, they can view it. Okay, and then of course, this was just a singular assignment, so they could be working on that. They can hit exit. Okay, nice, when you're done, send it and select to turn it in. So there's where they can attach that file again. I'm gonna hit this back arrow so you can see now, I have one assignment that I haven't started, one that's in progress, and here's my completed tab, okay? Over here on the right side, you do have math tools and a glossary and a game center that you can check out as well. The active ebook and the student edition are another way to get to the full textbook. That way, if you are going by the district lesson plans and you need to see a certain page and maybe the teacher hadn't assigned it yet or you're wanting to get ahead or you're behind and need to go back, you do have access to the full book online right here. Okay, and I suggest, I mean, you can check out the map tools in the game center as well, just for your own use as well. Okay, so we did the browse tab where you can see all of your books. We looked at classes where you will see assignments if the teacher goes in and assigns specific things. We can also go and look at the grades tab. Okay, so depending on if the assignments have been assigned through there, you can click on there. And um, we haven't assigned anything that would be like a test or anything. And so there's no grades to look at yet. You just have those assignments over here and the grades that go along with that. But in the future, you might have some stuff here in the grade tab to look at. Okay. Um, that covers, and the Pearson Realize button right up here will take you back to the main screen. Um, that covers the basics of using Pearson. As a student, uh, your little avatar is up here in the corner. You can click on that and there'll be a sign out button to sign out. And then be sure you close your tabs as you go through. There's a sign out button here you can also hit just to make sure everything saves and signs out. You're gonna close that. And from our previous videos on class links, we just wanna uh, remind you in case another student, a uh, sibling has to use the same computer, you want to be sure you come over here, click on your uh, drop down button and sign out of ClassLink. And then be sure you completely close out your browser. And what I'm showing right now is on a Mac. So you need to be sure that you quit. Uh, just a little extra um, information on navigating our ECSD page. Um, right here, we have the uh, remote learning COVID information. Once you get to this page, you can click on information for parents and it opens up uh, all these different topics over here on the left side. It'll look a little bit different on a phone. You'll have the three lines that you have to hit to expand these topics. But um, as you go through and look, we've got our ECSD remote learning where you can log on. We are making updates daily. Um, so please be sure to come back and check it out. It'll be changing. Um, there's a for parents and students section, okay? And it'll help you on navigating through um, our ECSD page, whether you're on a desktop or a cell phone or mobile device, okay? So there's some different information on uh, the different logins that you can um, have access to. If you need help with a student password being reset, there's options there. We have an FAQ section. That way, if you're stuck and, and not sure what to do, uh, there's some options right here. Please be in communication with your child's teacher. Um, get with them and they will be able to hopefully direct you to information or contact us and that way we can get out some more information to y'all and clarify what needs to be happening. Okay, I hope y'all have a great day.